Hey you guys, Desmond here. And Lucretia. And welcome back to the channel. Woo, and today amazing. we are here to discuss three episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 9. So we have to apologize. Tom just got away from us these past few weeks. The first weekend, our friend here, she was out in Seattle living her best life. The following week... I went to Pride. It was fun. She went to Seattle Pride, had a good time. Uh, the following week, my internet decided it didn't want to work anymore, so I went a whole week without internet. So here we are, week three, having to play extreme catch-up. But hey, it is what it is. And then we're going to have to play some more catch-up when we get back. Oh, yeah, because this is the only one you're getting this week. DragCon's next week. We'll be, we'll be in L.A., um, and then the following week, we got to catch up on France, Mexico, and Canada versus the World Stars next week. So, we got a bit of, a bit to catch up on, but don't worry, it's all coming. You're going to hear our uh, opinions, and plus, we're also going to talk about that Canada versus the World promo, because it's wrestling theme, and you know that's... So, we're going to... It's jam. So, that's my jam. Because it must be jam because uh, jelly don't shake. Wait, no, it must be jelly because jam don't shake. So it's my jelly. Yes. Okay. And you see he's in a new location. Yes, I am in the process of reworking my second bedroom in my apartment. Hence the mattress up against the wall. But, yeah. We're, that's, but you could have just put your green screen on. I didn't feel like it's the, the green screen is literally sitting next to me. I don't feel like putting it up there. I really don't. It's alright. I've been in such a let's pack my shit up for DragCon and uh, Disneyland and all the other festivities we have planned for next week. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause we're actually flying we're in. Yeah, we're flying in a few days before. Cause last time we flew in the day before DragCon, so it was like boom DragCon. This time we're flying in a few days before, so we can you know. Right. Do the tourist type of things and look around. Yep, so we got Disneyland, the beach, then drag on. Yeah, and then other things as well. <laughs> it's nothing too crazy. Like, I want to go to the uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame. Okay. Yeah, I want to go there. It's not too far from our hotel. I'm not going to say where our hotel is, but it's not too far from there. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, there's other things going on. But yes, so stick oh, with yeah. us. Speaking of which, we got to make sure our hotel has like secured parking. <laughs> yes, well, we'll definitely check into that. But um, so it's going to be a little scarce again next week, but we will be back. We will get fully caught up and we will have a good time. So before we get into it, got to remind everyone to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We are close to our goal of 1,000 subscribers, and we love to reach you as soon as possible. And for us to be able to reach that goal, we need you. Yes, you and you and you over there, too, to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you never miss when we upload, okay? Yeah. Which will be more often than it has been for this month of July. <laughs> yeah. So, what did we think of the three episodes in general? We had the Design Challenge, a Rusical, and a Lollapurusa. They were all really good, actually. Really good episodes. Like it, they all blended well with into each other. Yeah, it, it was really good. You know, there's been some challenges where I'm like, yeah, I wish this wasn't on elimination. But these three episodes were like, okay, okay, okay. I can see nobody going home on these episodes because they mm -hmm. were really good. But let's go ahead and get into them now. We're just gonna give you straight up, boom, just straight meat. Okay, usually we like to give you the meat, the potatoes, the other, the other fixings. No, today it's just straight up the meat. We're going to talk about what happened on that runway, and we're going to move on. Okay? So, let's get into the Gigiana, and we start off with RuPaul's outfit from the Design Challenge. Yeah. What did you think of this look and your score? This is not my favorite look. Uh -huh. I, I, I give this like a, a D. I actually like this. I thought it was cute. It's different. I give it a B plus. The wig's in the right spot. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I always have to. I always have to thank our Lord and Savior 
when the wig is in the right spot. <laughs> because my God, my God. All right. So the category. For, oh wait, no. We gotta introduce our uh, judges as well. We have Michelle Visage. T. S. Madison finally is here. Now come hey. on, Jag Grace. Y'all could have brought her in hella earlier than when y'all did. And our hey. special guest judge, Jeremy Scott. So, the category is Make Your Own Kind of Ruzik. So, basically, there was a list of songs they had to pick from, and then they had to design the look based off of that song. So, do you remember the songs that were available, or would you want me to read them off to you? Um, I remember Star Baby, uh, what, something like Drag Cowgirl. Okay, I'll read them off real quick. We have Cake and Candy. New friend okay. silver, old friends gold. I bring the beat. Cha cha bitch. Star baby. Lady cowboy. Hey sis, it's Christmas and kitty girl. So if you were given that list of uh, songs, which song would you want to build a look around? Uh, I probably would have did Star Baby, honestly. Mm hmm. Mostly just because it's slow. <laughs> so you can actually just like mm. model out there, give you that walk. <laughs> well, if I had to make a look based off of those eight songs provided, I would have did Hey Sis is Christmas. <laughs> of course you would. Like I said in the last review, it is no surprise. Y'all know how much I love Christmas. So mm -hmm. Hey Sis is Christmas. Gonna mark you off of my wish list. Ain't no Santa Claus, ain't no Mrs. We gonna have the best Christmas that ever existed. And then we gotta get crystallized at Christmas time. All you better hosts better get in line. It's crystal with a K, go straight to the V. It's time to party with Miss Versace. Sorry. Sorry. Looking like a mannequin at Drake. <laughs> we, she did look like a mannequin. <laughs> but, you know, I love that. I love that. Now, say if you could have done a, a design look based off of any RuPaul song, what song would you have chosen? You know, Catwalk is still my favorite. Mm -hmm. oh. See, I'm torn because there is two songs at the top of my head that I'm like, oh my God, I would have loved to done. Mm -hmm. That I would love to create a look behind. Uh, the first mm -hmm. one is Mighty Love, and it's the it's not the version that's on the American album, but the version on her, um, one of the compilation albums, with, it's Pink, I remember, Remember Me, that's what it's called, Remember Me. The version mm -hmm. that's on that one, because it's different mm -hmm. from the version on American, I would want to look based off of that, or you know how much I love ASMR Lover. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have came out with a little mic, and just... You know, just really just did the whole thing. And he said I would have came out and my dress would have been bubble wrap. Oh, and just pop, pop, pop. ASMR lover, that's what you are to me. But yes, honey, <laughs> let's get into these looks in the streets, okay? Up first with Ooh. Star Baby, we have Plastic Tiara. What did you think and what is your score? Um, you know what? This was gorgeous, and I give this an A. Same. Like, I thought this was well executed. It One of my favorites of the night, A. Yes. A, A, A. Hands down. Up next is George's Bringing the Beat, okay? Um, for this one, for me, <laughs> it's, 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 it's good for George's. It, I hate saying things like that. But, like, this is very George's. And very it's, it's well put together, the three, the three pieces of fabric she used. Um, so I'm going to give this a C- minus because I do like it. I just wish there was more. What did you think? You know, I feel the same way. I mean, for George's, it's all right. And I'd give it a C. Okay. Up next, new friend silver, old friends gold. It's Got Mick. What did you think of Got Mick in your score? Um, I'm still, still not quite sure what they were raving over, other than the fact that she just took two days or a day and a half 
to braid a bunch of fabric together and wrap it around herself. And then made a purse. Um, the, I don't think this is like her best effort. And I think if she would had more time, she could have created something really, really awesome. So I, I give this like a C plus. For me, I really enjoyed this. I love the braid. I do feel like there could have been more, but at the same time, you know, she was blocked this episode. So it could have been like, I'm still going to give you something cute, but I'm not going to go out my way knowing I can't win a badge. Right. So it could have been something like that, but I really love the braided detail of this. So for me, this is a B plus. B plus. Okay. Moving on to Chanel, because hey sis, it's Christmas. I thought this was so cute. And for someone who doesn't sew that well, this came together nicely. I give it a B. I give it a B. What did you think? You know what? I agree. Other than she kept having to quench it down. But I think she was squint she was squinching it down like unnecessarily. And I guess maybe that was just part of the shtick. Mm -hmm. You know, just, ooh. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Because other than that, like, I think it's very well constructed. Um, I don't even mind the two opposing humongoid bows hanging off the side. Oh, I love the it bows. still gives Christmas. It still looks like wrapping paper. Um, I give it a C plus. This will be my best friend at the office Christmas party. Like, I want to go sit next to her. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's uh, how I get you to sit next to me. I gotta wrap myself up and <laughs> Up next, okay. we have Roxy Andrews with Lady Cowboy. What did you think of Miss Andrews? This was so nicely executed. Like, I absolutely love this. I don't even mind the chaps too much. Um... I don't... E I did have, like, a little conundrum with how the chaps were constructed just because I've never seen chaps that connected in the front and then in the back like that. I've seen them connect on the sides but at the same time I'm like A, it goes I, I think there should have been like some fringe on the bottom of the bolero jacket instead of just the sleeves but all the same I give this an A minus. I thought this was amazing. You know I hate chaps. But with them being that. right there in the front, that works for me. Like, that, I didn't it even... Works for you. It does. I didn't even flinch. I'm like, oh, they're chaps. I like them. I think because they look more like regular pants. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe because there's another set of chaps a few queens down that I hate it. Um, but... This was cute. This actually gets an A plus for me. Okay, you know I was born and raised here in Texas. You know, ain't no hold 'em. Um, this ain't Texas. This is just amazing. No One of my we favorites of the down. night. One of my favorites of the it. night. This gets A plus. Up next with Kitty Girl, we have Vanessa Vangie. I thought this was cute. Very Vangie, yes. fun. Bouncy, I liked it. It gets a B for me. What did you think? Yeah, I loved it. Like, it was very, very, very Vanjie. And I'm like, you know, if she'd have been there, she'd probably turned that, that whole little adverse out. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> I, I liked it. It's a very her. I give it an A minus. Period. Up next is Nina West with Cha Cha Bitch. Now, can we pause? This is the best Nina West has fucking looked ever on this runway. Like, she walked out, and I'm like, Nina? Nina. Mm. Mm. Nina West. Yeah. Nina from the House of West. <laughs> Who knew she can serve? Yeah. And it still had it's still on theme with the cha-cha bitch. I'm just like, and she's another queen that doesn't really sew. So the fact that she turned this out, mm -hmm. that was that was just amazing to me, amazing right. to me. 
Because, you know, a lot of people try to discredit her because, you know, she does do more campier looks. But I'm like, here, and here's the thing. One thing about that season 12 contestant, Disqualify, whoever designed her looks, we got to give them props because it was the right mixture of fashion and camp. Mm. So it can be right. done. It can right. be. So... I just I I thought this was amazing. This gets an A for me. I love it. What did you think? I gave it an A too because it was just enough camp. Then it, you know it was red and it was polka dots. You know polka dots are my favorite. And it was. See, I, I'm so sexy. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I'm ignoring the polka dots. I'm ignoring the polka dots. Cause if you, I'm like I'm not even gonna bring them up, but but you since you brought them up, I'm gonna be like, I like this so much, I'm going to ignore the polka dots. I'm gonna ignore them. But anyway, continue. It's I'm just sorry. Like that corset is just freaking awesome, and yeah, like the, it's constructed well, and for her to be so body conscious, like. She walked out with so much confidence, confidence that I you love could the confidence. not tell that she was in the least little teensy eensy weensiest bit uncomfortable. Cause she just straight out and was like, <clears throat> some time. <laughs> I loved it. This gets an A for me. <laughs> Up next we have Angeria Paris Van Michaels with cake and candy. I'ma let you go first. Um, I love you, Angeria. I love you so much. I love you so much, Angeria. We love you so much, Angie. We do. We love you so much, Angeria. We love you so much, and I believe you're on my list of queens I want to go see next week. Of course. She better be. This just was not. Yeah, there she is. (laughs) Yeah. This just was not. And it ain't got... For him, it might be the chaps. For me, it's just the outfit in whole. Like, I love it because it's on you. And I love you. (laughs) And I love you. But this is like, it's not a no, the, the wig is a no for me, dog. The outfit is like a, like a, a D plus. Now for me, at first I was gonna give it a D, but those chaps are just so bad uh, that I have to take off a grade level, which bumps it down to it's a no for me, dog. From her head down to her toe, it's a no for me, dog. I really wish the first look she was going for really would have worked out. And I remember watching her on Roscoe. She said this was like her third or fourth outfit that she mm-hmm. made. Like, she scrapped the other ones. Right. And it's just like, I hate that she had to go through all that. But this look, it's a no for me, dog. It is a no for me, dog. Do they get take these outfits home? I think so. Because I want to say I've seen, yeah, because Plastique posted a picture in hers. I remember seeing it. Mm. They better let me take this home shit. I made it. <laughs> so out of our eight amazing queens, let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, out of these queens on the screen, who had your favorite look and why? Um, my favorite look. Damn, I almost forgot about plastic. Shit. Damn it. I'm gonna have to say plastic, mostly because it's just constructed very well. Plastic. For me, it's Roxy. I think Roxy did the Which best. Which was here. the next on the list? It was like plastic, Roxy, then Nina. It was plastic, and then, um, not plastic, it was Roxy, then plastic, and Nina were right here with each other. Yeah, and then after that was like. Mick. No, it was, it was Vanjie. 
then Chanel, then Mick, then Angeria, like, just squeaked above <laughs> George's. <laughs> so, after the deliberation, we found out that Plastique, Got Mick, Roxy, and Nina West were in the top. Do you agree? Yeah. I agree. Hold on, let me look to see if I agree with these tops and bottoms. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with the tops. I agree with the tops. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where I disagree just the tadest bit. We find out that the top two is Roxy Andrews and Plastic Tiara. Do you agree? Now, I'm not mad at this top two. Right. I would have put Nina in the top. I, like, that look just needs flowers. It needs the flowers. It needs it, it needs it, it needs it. So the queen I would have had to replace, and y'all might hate me for this, but it's just my opinion, I would have took Plastic out. I would have made it Roxy and Nina. I would have. Nina, Nina. I would have, I would have. But... This is what we got in the... They got a, a beautiful benefactress badge. Beautiful benefactress badge. So, they lip sync to No One Gets the Prize by Diana Ross. I'm like, Rue, are you trying to throw them here to let them know, hey, y'all ain't getting no prize money. Just, just let you, Going you know, to your charity. Let me remind you again, y'all are not getting prize money. No one gets the prize. <laughs> Right. And I heard this song, God, in years. I, I was probably a teenager the last time I actually just heard this song being played. I've never heard this song being oh, played. Oh, really? Well, see, I grew up in a house uh, where we appreciated Diana Ross. You grew up in a house that played black music. I grew up in a house that played Barbara Streisand and Diane well, not the, no. Well, I'm finna say my Carol mother played a diverse uh, amount of music. Again, but your house played more. Your house played more diverse music. I grew up on Yentl. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with Yentl, honey. I can <laughs> yent with the rest of too. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, mostly country. Like, my mom really loves country music still to this day. But yeah, she mm. played everything. And then I had an auntie who loved Diana Ross. So that's how I really got into her uh, music. Um, but yes, you know, it, it's just so funny to me because I, I've had somebody recently tell me I don't know country music. Your, your face, your face. And I'm like, honey... You you don't know, do you? I don't know country music. I, I don't. Me. Okay. That's not a friend. Oh, it wasn't. She wasn't. She never was. Okay. She was trying to be uh, smart. She's like, you don't know country music. What? Who? Who, who don't? Because, baby, I, I, I could pull out my whole list, my whole playlist dedicated to nothing but... Country music, honey. Now, 85% of it is Reba, but hey. All right? Don't play with me. But anyway, no one gets the prize. What did you think of this lip sync? You didn't like the lip sync? I can't hear you if you're asking me a question. Hello? Because you are frozen. My mic. My okay, mind. so she's frozen. That's Well, I'm frozen on her end. She's not frozen on our end. So we're going to give her a second. Maybe she'll click back. Because on my end, we can see her. She's moving. Oh, wait, no, no. She's frozen now. She's frozen, so let's pause. All right, so we got that situated. So, Krisha, what did you think of the lip sync between Plastique and Roxy? Um, you know what? I knew Roxy was going to get this. Um, you know, I saw this online and I completely agree. This uh, is a good example of old school versus new school. 
Right. Because Roxy embodied the song. Yes, definitely. When she pulled out the nail file, bucked that rue, I'm like, just crown her already. <laughs> that was the move, too. That I'm that like, was the moment. And baby was, oh my, I'm like, oh my God, I love every second of this. <laughs> and I'm just so proud of Plastique for knowing the words. You know, <laughs> every lip sync prior to this, she did not know the words. Mm. I'm just so happy she knew the words. Like, I want to give her a quick mini little round of applause right there for knowing the damn words, okay? Mm. So RuPaul decides that the winner is Roxy Andrews. And for the final time this season, she gets to snip a bitch. Yep. And it was very quick and simple. Eye for an eye. She Mm -hmm. got Angie back. Do you think that was the smart choice? Not really. If I was Roxy, I would have one hundred percent snipped Angie back. But yeah. And it's fun watching them uh, snipping each other back and forth the whole season. <laughs> right. Um. But yes. So now it's time to move on to the next episode where we are doing a rusical. Up uh, first, yeah. we have Mama Rue. What did you think of Rue's look for this week? Oh, God, this was gorgeous. Gorgeous, darling. Gorgeous. Oh, this was so much fun. Mm-hmm. I love this. I want this in every color. Same. And your score? And, oh, A+. plus. You know, I think Mama Rue's been, like, weightlifting. She's been up in the gym just working on her fitness. Where her weight Because them shoulders done got a little wider. Either that or they're tying that corset just a little bit tighter. Because there's um, been a lot of... I, I agree with that. everything that you've said, but I'm going to give it an A just because that wig is just too high. Mm-hmm. Ooh, just, just a... Just a... Just move to my back. Just a... You know, just just a tab. Like an inch more. If Not even half an inch. Like in half an inch... But Rue also has a really round head, so I imagine it's hard to find the right spot every time. Right. Yeah. But yes, I love, I live, I laughed, okay? This week we're joined by Michelle Fassage, our girl T.S. Madison, and Christine W. Now, have you ever heard of Christine W.? No. Neither have I. Not at all. Not at all. Huh? Well, uh, have you? No, not at all. Ugh. And I'm I'm really upset. We'll get to the lip sync song. Speaking of, the lip sync song for the last episode. They ruined a good chance to use the song Make Your Own Kind of Music. By Mama Cass. Mm-hmm. Like, especially with the runaway being Make Your Own Kind of Ruzik. I'm like, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. And like for this episode, I get it, Christine W was there. But this would have been a great episode to do like a fun, spooky type of song like Disturbia, Unholy. Ooh. Hell, Ooh. I even would have took the Monster Mash at this point. She did the Monster Mash. Hey. She did the Monster Mash. Honestly, the monster with the queens we had in the top, that would have been really cute. Hmm. The Monster Mash. But yeah, it's just like, I get it, she's here. But like, this would have been a fun time to use like a spooky ish type song. Like that song with Kim Petras and Elvira. I forget the name of it, but it pops up on my playlist every now and then. They they could have did one with, um what's that baby's name? I can't remember her name. But Calling All the Monsters. Calling oh, Ch- All the Monsters. China McCain. Calling All the Monsters. They could have reused I'm in Love with a Monster for this. I'm in Love. Ooh. I'm in Love. I'm in Love with a Monster. Like there were so many, you know, spooky type songs. Or you could have did that creepy, crazy in love remix Beyonce did for one of the Fifty Shades music movies. Uh, your love's got me looking so crazy. Yeah, like right like that weird, creepy ballad version of Crazy in Love. I imagine that's cheaper than the original Crazy in Love. You're like, come on now. Like I get it, Christine is here, but at the same time, I love when the lip sync matches the episode. Oh. <clears throat> And it didn't. And we're going to get to that lip sync, too. 
So, it is now time for the musical Rosemary's Baby Shower. I'm sorry, Rosemary Baby Shower. Rosemary. Now, let me say something. This was a really good musical. Huh? This was really good. Like I said, ever since Leland took over these musicals for the U.S., they've been, mwah. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, I wouldn't say this was the best one, but this is definitely top five. Definitely. In my opinion. Like, it, like it's, it's, it's really good. Really good. Mm, let's talk our, to... our little friend, JPP. <laughs> so, up first, we have Plastic Tiara. If y'all hear any noise, they decide they're going to mow my apartments today while I'm recording. So, if y'all hear that, I apologize. And can. <laughs> and can, I apologize. Now, uh, how did you think Plastique did in the musical? I think she did really well, she actually. She did amazing. She did a lot better than I gave her credit for. Like, one thing I want to give Plastique her props for, she came back and showed the fuck out this season. She really She did. might not have been able to win a lip sync. Mm-hmm. But she came back and showed out this season. Definitely. Just because I was a middle out doesn't mean I can't come and shut it down. Okay, because the package baby was packed. My the God, gym. this runway package, probably the best runway package we've ever seen. Packaging. Like, the rumor Not has it she spent... but packaging. Yeah, like, rumor has it she spent $250,000 on it. If so, the proof is in the pudding because, baby, these runways... Okay. These runways. But, yeah, she did an amazing job in this musical. Up next, we have Chanel and Angie. You know, they played off each other through the whole thing, so I decided right. to include them here. What did you think of them individually? Well, you know, Chanel turned it out. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to lie. Like, Chanel did a really great job. I, I really enjoyed her. And then Angie, I was a little, well, uh, when it came to Angie... And, like, I'm looking at Angie and then looking at the role she wanted to play. And, you know, as much as she was a little, uh, in this role, I think this role was better suited for her than the role she wanted to play. Because I don't think she would have played that role any better than the person who played it. I think she would have played it better, but I think she nailed this role here. I think her and Chanel, they played off each other well. They were strong upon their own. And also Chanel being in the whole, pretty much the whole damn musical. Like she did an amazing job. And for her to not done a musical. Everybody else on this cast have done a musical at one point. But her. Right. And she came in. She knew her words. I love watching Chanel lip sync. And we're going to talk about it more in the Lala Perusa. But the hands, honey. The hands. The hands be hands. The hands be Like the hands are. Like I'm, I'm with you, right? I'm, I'm right there with you, baby. Um, but yes, I thought Chanel did an amazing job, but Angie did a great job too. Moving on to Got Mick, she struggled with the choreography a little bit. A little bit. You know, I kind of expected that because you know she's not like you know the one, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? But I thought she did a great job. You know, she really played the character. And I thought that moment was cute when the wig was spinning around her head. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. I love the reference to the, ex oh, Lord, the exorcist, if I can speak. Um, but, yeah, I thought she did a great job. What did you think of Got Mick? Um, I think she did a great job, too. They must have had her come back out to do that whole little wig trick. Probably. Because, like, where she was during, like, the movement segments and where she was during the head spinning segments were, like, two different areas. So they didn't mark it very well. <laughs> but um, other than that, I think she did a really good job. I mean, it was a role she wanted. It was a role she wanted to play. You don't sit there and get a role you wanted to play and not do it well. It happens, though. It does happen. I, it has happened. Up I next thought about is, that as it came out my mouth. Up next is Roxy Andrews. And baby, she ate this. <laughs> because Look, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah, and I'm glad I'm not the only one who thought this was Nina when she first came out. And so I remember, oh wait, no, Roxy is Hennywise. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, she real the voice, the movement, like it all works for me. I know you're not the biggest fan of clowns. I, I know. But this this, this very person. This this very person, yes. But yeah, I thought this was amazing. What did you think of Roxy's performance? Minus the clown of it all. Minus the clown of it all. I think she did really well. She really committed to the bit. Like, even out of costume, when they were just doing the the vocals and the recording. Yeah. The fact that they stressed their vocal cords enough to sit there and, and make it sound the way that they knew it should sound. I appreciated that. And for that, she gets an A, even though we're not grading it. <laughs> <laughs> Up next is George's. Honestly, a role inspired by Megan. That baby, that is r- purely written for Georges. It really was. And I agree with Michelle. Even when she wasn't like the main focus of the musical, she was mm. in character. She was just doing little small things. Like I'm like, it worked so much for me. I thought this was such a huge redemption from her last musical. Because remember. She was just kind of there. And I'm like, well, you're doing the moves, honey, but well, come on. Get, right. You know, give Feel it to it. us. Fill it. And, Feel it. And they gave her a role where she didn't have to fill it. So it worked. Hey. And she had the face down. This wig is everything. Um, what okay. did you think of Georgia? And like, because I'm sitting there and I was watching and I was like, okay, this is the drag version of Megan. And you have to understand that. Because, you know, the real Megan, her hair was not that big. Mm -mm. But if you're doing drag, you know, it's got to be bigger and bolder and draggier. And so, like, I get it and I loved it. And, you know, even though we're not grading it, it gets an A. (laughs) Up next is Nina West. What did you think of Nina? (laughs) Nina was so funny. This was funny. (laughs) She was funny. She was great. You could tell she's been on Broadway because she was concise. Even though I think when she was learning the choreography, it was a little rough. But once she got up there, it came she together. had people. Huh? I said it came together. Yeah, like once she was up there and she had people to follow, which is I think what she's used to. She's used to being in an ensemble. She's used to having other dancers around to follow to remind her like, okay, this step is next. So to sit there and have to do the counts by yourself is weird but if you're able to sit there and follow somebody else it makes it easier and it it made it a lot better so this gets a i'm gonna say she did an amazing job here i know this lady (laughs) i've had arguments with this lady Uh, (laughs) we both have (laughs) but yeah she really did a good job with this character it was funny I enjoyed it. And then last but definitely not least, we have the devil herself, Vanji. Miss Vanji turned it out. Turned it Miss all Vangie. the way out. My Miss God. Miss Vanji turned it out. I can't she came out and she was like, I am Janet Jackson B I T C H. It uh, was so, and I love I'm the choreography that Miguel gave her. Like it was just, it wow. all worked. The outfit, like whoever made this costume for her, like they need their props all as well. All the roses. Like it's just, but, this was just so good. The commitment, and I'm so glad off screen she finally got that phrase right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that was our musical. So the category is Bring Back My Pearls. <laughs> so if you were going to do a Pearl Runway, what would Roxy St. James bring? Um, I probably would have did some Birth of Venus, something where I was like half naked but had pearls going all down my body. Mm-hmm. But I would have been all glittery and stuff. I'd have sat there and went to um, Shea Coulee's Bedazzler. I already, I, I feel what you, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. So let me see if you can pick up what I'm putting down, because I have to be careful with how I word this. So I would come out as a bride on her wedding night. 
Okay. In lingerie. Okay. And around her neck, you would just see a certain... Necklace. Necklace. <laughs> and then you would see pieces of the necklace all over the, you know, lingerie as well. Concentrated in one specific area. Yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's you know, then drip down to other areas as well. I, that's what I would have done. I would have been like, Pearl, Pearl necklace. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to know what my initial thought was? That was my initial thought. And I'm like, I would have, I 100% would have went down that route. No, nope. you want to know what my, what my intrusive thought was? What? Pearl's up in booty hole. Oh, I'd have came out like Samantha from Sex in the City with the pearl panties. See, I haven't seen Sex in the City, so I wouldn't know that reference. Well, for those of us who have watched Sex in the City and not the Netflix version, but the, the true original HBO version, or if you have the DVDs from way back when, the pearl panties net version. <laughs> Where they, you could find all the cussing and all the titties and all the ass. And then um, I saw. I are was you watch- frozen again, or uh-huh. are you just looking at me? You're frozen. So at first we had plastic tiara. Yes. A plus. <laughs> A plus. No, no other words. A plus. We're gonna kind of yeah. jump through these quickly. Angeria Paris Van Michaels. A. A. I, I had some things to say, but then somebody's computer froze somewhere. Your computer phones. Um, up next, we have Chanel. A plus. Hey. Up next, got Mick. A. B. Okay. Up next is Roxy Andrews. B. C plus. Okay. Georges. C. A minus. Okay. Nina West. D. B. <laughs> I give it a B. A. Vanessa Vangie. Uh, a plus. A. So out of all of our amazing queens here, who had your favorite look of the night? Angeria. Angeria. For me, it was plastic. Like, plastic really just... Again, we talked about how much she allegedly spent on this package, package. and it's just beautiful. But Vanjie's a close runner-up. Oh, baby. Oh. So, after the deliberation, we find out the queens that are in the top are Plastic, Chanel, mm-hmm. Vanjie, yep. Nina, yes. and Georges. Do you agree? Hey. Yeah. I agree. They this really this was well. a good. Now, me personally, I wouldn't have had Nina in the top. Nina did do a great job, but right. I think she is. But I'm so English, Desmond. But I think I would have just I did wasn't. four people in the top this week. So uh-huh. if I had to, cause somebody Nina, but Nina did do a great job. So like, it's not like the end of the world. So, right. our queens line up, and we find out that the top two queens of this week are Georges and Chanel. Do you agree? I, I think Vanjie should have been in there oh, instead of Georges. Instead of Georges, but okay. For, I for me, I think this was the correct top two. For me. So, they both earned a beautiful benefactress badge. Which means Chanel finally got one. Yeah, uh, okay. About damn time. Mm. So they lip sync to Love Come Home by Christine W. Never heard this song. Heard this song. Never want to hear it again. Mm-mm. Um, I'm going to say this about Georges now before we get to Lala Perusa. Because uh, Georges does a good job in her lip syncs. Mm-hmm. But she's so dead faced when she does the lip syncs. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I truly yeah. think that's why she lose that. Like she lost to Angie. She uh, she tied here and then she lost to Roxy. 
she's not giving the face. She got the moves right. down. She got the dip, the splits. She like she got that, but the face mm-hmm. isn't there. And I think that's what happened during the rusical last time when she was dead. Yes, it was very dead in the face, and it's just like there's no emotion behind them eyes, and it's hard to relate to the lip sync. I think. Maybe if she lightened up on the lashes a little bit. Because, like, I already have hooded eyes. And then when I put on lashes, them hoods just become straight up Mm. (laughs) blind. But we find out it's a tie. Do you agree with a tie? uh, Not really. Not really either, but I'm okay with it. Because, honestly, if I had to pick one Chanel... Facts. But because the lip sync just wasn't good altogether, mm-hmm. yeah, give it to them both. Hell. It's for charity! I think, I think it's the song. Oh, it was definitely the song. Like I said, if they would have went down a spooky route and gave them something spooky or spooky-esque, Disturbia, Disturbia or Unholy would have been my top two choices for this episode. Mommy don't know that especially since they named especially so since they name dropped Sam Smith in the Rusical. Right. So I'm like, you mentioned them, let's use their song. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Uh but yes, um afterwards or you should have just asked if Kim Petrus could come be the judge. Something. Now, with them winning this challenge, they won two beautiful benefactress badges. One to keep and one to give away. Georges decided to give hers to Chanel, and Chanel yep. decided to give hers to Georges. Hey. Smart. Chanel went from zero to two badges, like that. Yep. And now Georges is in the four badge club. Yep. And everybody was like, oh, it just don't make sense to give it to Georges. But she said why she did it. And they even yep. showed it again in the workroom when Chanel asked, who would you give your badge to? Georges was the only one who spoke up and was like, well, I would give it to you. And that stuck with right. Chanel. So, like, and I feel like no matter who would have been up there with her, it could have been Plastique, it could have been whoever, she was still going to give that badge to Georges. Because she was the only one who said, I'm going to give you a badge. Right. So, after they give each other a badge, hey. they go back and we find out that next week is the Lollapalooza. So let's Lala peruse, shall we? Up uh, first, we yeah. have RuPaul. What did you think and of Ru's look skirt. and your score? She said, I'm going to give you pretty woman realness. <laughs> <laughs> but I still give it an A minus. I give this an A. This works for me. This is really okay. good. Really good. Really good. I think there needed something's wrong with that wig. I don't even think this is Ruth's head. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Most for once, of the time it's Ruth's head. For once the rig don't bother me. I feel like everything is proportioned and placed correctly. Yeah. So for the Lala Perusa, it's just family. We have Michelle Visage and Ross Matthews here. So, out of all of our beautiful queens who are lined up here, we're still going to ask the question, who had your favorite lip sync Lollapurusa snap down look? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to say Vanjie, if I'm being honest. And if I'm going to be honest, it's the queen right next to her, Chanel. Hey. I, you, you know, I love a good shimmy outfit. Baby, you can shimmy in that. Mm-hmm. Oh, baby, that fringe would be just to be fringing, honey. If I if I'ma have to lip sync Lala Peru, I want I want you to see me shimmy shimmy shake shake. Every single lip sync out every single lip sync outfit is gonna have some fringe on it. You gonna see me shake it to the left, now shake it to the right. Hey, shake it down the middle. I love you, my oh my dude. So RuPaul announced that the rules for this Lala Peru's are as followed. All the queens' name are in that box. Bruno will pick a name out of there. That person will pick their opponent. That opponent will then pick the song they're going to lip sync to. The winner will continue to lip sync until there's only one winner left. Hey. And our top two queens will both earn them a beautiful benefactress badge. So here's Bruno. And I love how Bruno's at all of the Lala Peruses now. And that they let him sit at the table. 
I, yeah. think, I, I love that. I'm like, come on, Bruno. All right. And he's like, you know, this thong has finally earned me a seat at the table. Shoot, I am. At, baby, I'm at the table. I'm and at the table. I haven't it's said one, a one single word on this program. Producer's credit. I have not said a single word on this show. And I've made it to the table, baby. I made mm-hmm. it to the table. He's like, I got here on body. Like, body honestly, I think this episode smile. was the first time I've heard Bruno speak on the show. Like, I follow him online, so, like, I hear him speak online. But I think this episode was the first time I've heard him speak on the show. <laughs> so, Bruno pulls out Got Mixed Ball. So, if you were the first queen to be selected, who would you have chosen to go against? And why was it Nina West? Because it would have been Nina West. <laughs> It sure would have been Angie. As soon as, soon as we posted, Nina, 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 Nana, Nina, Nina. Nana. And, but, but the only thing dumb. is, the only thing is, we're picking. Know why? Like, God, Mick was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna pick somebody who does a completely different version of lip syncing than I do." Okay, that's your strategy. What did you think was going to happen when they were allowed to pick the song? And they see, were going to And pick I think that's the, the reason why nobody like I think that's why it took a minute before Nina got selected. And you know, Nina actually chose Chanel because looking at the list of songs, we're going to look at them here in a second. There was one song on there where like we know who that song is for. Right. And I, me personally, I would not want to lip sync to you spin me right round, baby, right round like a record baby. But at the same time, if that means I get an easy win, then all, all right, Nina, let's go ahead and do this song, girl. The only way I wouldn't pick her is if I didn't know the words to that song. If I didn't know all the words, I'll be like, hold on. I want to do Pussycat Dolls. Uh, Vanjie, I know you'll pick it. Vanjie, Vanjie! <laughs> Look. If it was me up there, they'd have just been SOL because I knew the words to every single song up there. I knew the words to all of them, but you spin me right around. But I know the chorus, obviously. And I know right. the and I. I want to know your name. Watch out, here I come. You spin me right round, baby, right round. That's it. So, obviously, with me being there, I'm one of them people who want to be overly prepared. So, yes, I would have known the words if I was in this situation. Right. But me, as of right now, if I had to step on that stage and look at them songs, I'm like, yeah, all I know is the chorus. Like, I, I can't do that, and I know Nina going to pick that. <laughs> as a fan of one Adam Sandler and Jimmy Fallon, uh huh. Yes, I do know the Boy George songs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Got Mick, like you said earlier, chose Angie for some stupid reason. Right. So she gets to choose the song. And the songs for this Lala Perusa are fan favorite songs that they're reusing, which I love this idea. Right. I just wish they would have chose songs that need a redemption. Like, I Will Survive, Oops, I Did It Again, mm. No Scrubs, mm. you know, I'm Coming Out. Like, songs that need a redemption. And I'm like, we already got the rights for them, so, like, you can pull them out at any time. You know what I'm saying? Okay, look, because last, because in, in some of these seasons, you got Beyonce money, so... I'm just saying. So, for the songs that are listed here, we have Groove is in the Heart by Delight, Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler, I'm Every Woman by Shaka Khan, My Lovin' by In Vogue, When I Grow Up by the Pussycat Dolls, and You Spin Me Around, Right Round, Baby, Right Round, by Dead or Alive. So, if you had to pick a song, which of these songs would you have gone for first? Um... I'd have pulled in Angie and did my loving, cause then that way I'm not using too much, move. I'm not moving quite so much that I'ma lose breath when I know I gotta go again. Yeah. 
<laughs> for me, the song that I know like 100% of, and there's several of them, but like the one I know that I could do off the back of my hand, on the back of my head, I'm sorry, um, is I'm Every Woman, Shaka Khan. Right. My only issue is I'll have to catch myself because I'll try to do the Whitney at libs. That part. That's what's I gonna... found myself doing it while I was sitting here lip like, like at, it. Like at the end, I was like, Shaka! I'm like, oh, no, 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 Desmond. Wrong right? version. Wrong version. So that would be the only thing. Don't do the Whitney ad libs. Do Shaka's. <laughs> Which there are none. There are none. So, <laughs> unless just at the end, I yell Shaka! Because, you know, I'm extra like that. But I would have chose I'm every I'd have been the dance move anyway. I'd been like... <laughs> I would have chose I'm Every Woman if I had my first pick. And say if for some reason my first pick was gone, I would have chose When I Grow Up. Now, granted, am I a dancing bucking queen? No. No. But, baby, I can sell this. And I know how to work a stage. Mm. And knowing me, all, like I said, I'm going to have something that twirls and spin with me. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Because when I grow up, I want to be famous. I want to be a star. <laughs> but yes, Angie chose My Lovin', You're Never Gonna Get It by Invoke. You know what song they need from the Pussycat Girls? What? They need, um, what was that new one that came out before they oh, disbanded? Perfect. React. Yes. I blame, one thing I hate COVID, and I hated COVID. But the one thing that I hate COVID the most, they took the return of the Pussycat Dolls from us. Okay. Cause they were they were coming back. Then COVID hit, and they're like, "Oh well, all right, never mind." Right. I'm like, y'all, y'all, we y'all can try again. Meant to be. Y'all can try again, pussycat dolls. I'll, I'll be right here because okay. every time you leave, you pull me closer. I hang up the phone. You call me back, <laughs> baby. Now give me that. Oh, I may not be a dancer, baby, but I'm gonna wear you out to react. Okay. okay? Cause I know Cause the I know the you get some plastic tiara moves out of me. Hell I yeah. know the choreography from the video. That's how obsessed I was yes. with it. So baby, yes. I will pull. Oh, baby, I'm gonna pull it out on you. And baby, I'll get on that ground and kick that leg up. Ha! Oh. <laughs> Don't play with me. On the four legs, play everything. Cause these legs can move, so I can kick this leg up. But anyway. I can do footwork, just my handwork. <sighs> but yeah, she chose My Lovin', which was originally used on season two. Um, Raven versus Nicole Page Brooks from Atlanta, Georgia. Who needs to be back on All-Stars? So I could, come on, I've seen the rumor list for All-Stars 10, and I don't see Nicole Page Brooks from Atlanta, Georgia on there, and I'm highly upset. And that's a video we got to talk about probably after DragCon, the rumor list for All-Stars 10. Mm-hmm. There's like... 16 queens. Yeah, people are thinking there might be a different format this season. But yeah, there's like 16 of them. So, yeah, we'll have to see. But anyway, um, here we go. I love these little graphics they did for them too. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is cute. So, yeah. my loving, you're never going to get it in vogue. No, you're never going to get it. No. Never ever gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Angie won. Yeah. <laughs> it was clearly Angie from the jump. Now okay. Godmick Godmick did do a good job. I'm not gonna say Godmick did do good. She tried real hard. But you could just tell this is not a song she performs. You know what I'm saying? Right. I felt like she probably would have done better with probably any other song. Mm-hmm. But Angie did the damn thing, and RuPaul agreed because Angie gets to continue on the Lala Perusa, and unfortunately, got Mick is safe to slay another day. Yes, although I do love her outfit. Oh, that outfit was everything. Yeah. So up next, Bruno pulls out Vanjie's ball. So Vanjie Van- decides to pick Plastic Tiara. Yes. And Plastique chose the song that she wanted was When I Grow Up. So, Vanessa Plastique, When I Grow Up, Pussycat Dolls, what did you mm-hmm. think of this lip sync here? Um, 
I love plastic, but she focuses too much on being pretty. And so, you know, just all the little back bends and all that other stuff. And I'm like, I know you got your moves, and they're cute on TikTok. They don't necessarily work for lip syncs. <laughs> Listen, I thought they both did well. Um, I agree, the back bending and, you know, crotch grabbing. I'm like, it doesn't really fit the, when I grow up, I want to be famous. I'm like, that. it's not giving that. Right. And Vanjie, although she wasn't doing all the flips and dips and tricks, one thing I love about Vanjie, she sells it here. Right. She sold this song in the face because she really just was stomping back and forth on the runway. That's really all she was doing. But she yeah. was eating. It, it, definitely. Baby, that hair was woof, 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 woof. Flip. Woof, 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 woof. But RuPaul made her decision and chose Vanessa Vanjie as the winner of this lip sync. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. It could have went to plastic. I just don't think her energy fit when I grow up. No. Because at first it was going good until she started doing the, the bending. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, it's impressive. It's great. Right. You knew the words again. But it just, it didn't fit the, the song for me. Uh, it was like, for me, it was like, Plastique was like, I'm a pop star. And Vanjie was like, nah, bitch, I'm a pop star. Yeah. So Plastique. <laughs> one was giving Taylor Swift, the other one was giving Beyonce. So Plastique is safe to slay another day. She joins Got Mick in the back, and they get to sip on their cocktails and watch the rest of the show. Yeah. So, Bruno picks up Nina's ball next, and Nina picks Chanel, which, obviously, out of who's left, I would have picked Chanel, too. I'm not going against Georges or Roxy. Nope. No, ma'am. Come on over here, Chanel. We are, and Chanel picked the song that was predestined for her and Nina to do, and yeah. that was You Spin Me Round, Right Round, Baby, Right Round. By Dead like or Alive. Now, this lip sync was close. It was. And I gotta give Nina her props here. This is probably mm -hmm. the best lip sync Nina's done. Definitely. I was like, okay, Miss Nina. But Chanel's outfit was just... Hey, baby, she was using... Did you see? She, them turns, baby. Yep. I even got a picture of her mid-turn. I'm like, see, that's why I want fringe. I want sparkles. I want... But that... You finna see me. I'm already seven foot tall, but you're really going to see me. You're going to see these legs, too. Mm. And Chanel, like, you she just really... You so you can do them little kicks. Like, she really embodied this Chanel did. And Nina... Now, this reveal that Nina did, I think that's what really took me out of it. I'm like, ooh, the Nina, you, you were out. doing this good. This is the first time I've heard them all summer. Absolutely. Um, but Nina was doing good up until that reveal. I'm like, girl, it kind of slowed her down a little bit. Yeah, she struggled getting it off her leg. That too. But after the lip sync, RuPaul said Chanel was the winner. Do you agree? Yeah. I agree as well. Nina, you are safe to slay another day. Yeah. So now that we're down to two, the per uh, Bruno picked Roxy's ball, which means she gets to pick the song that her and George just gets to lip sync to. Right. And she chose Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler. Hero. I'm holding out for a hero to the end of the night. And he's gotta be fast and he's gotta be strong and he's gotta be ready for the night. <laughs> uh, so, George's Roxy, holding out for a hero. Roxy ate this up. Ate. Ate this Let's up. And you know what I said Especially earlier? After she took that little robe off, she took a little back robe off, and I was like, oh, never mind. Here she go. Yep. And like I said about Georgia's yeah. earlier, she's just, she doesn't, you don't feel the music. She doesn't have musicality. No. Because she does you know, the, she, she does the dances, I, she does the kicks, but like, you don't feel her when she's lip syncing. I think she's just too technical. In her mind, she's thinking, okay, what tricks can I get away with doing this? Instead of just it's what I think it is. instead of just really feeling the song and letting yeah. the song and letting the song decide what you finna do. Exactly. 
because it's like she just is like okay i need to point right here and then i'm gonna walk over here and kick in the air yeah, like she's like i know what i want to do and i know when i want to do it i just got to make sure i'm there to do it and like and it's just yeah you got to be more just on the flow with the lip sync and that's roxy like she ate this up look roxy was having fun fun and Roxy won the lip sync. Woo woo! So George's is safe to slay another day, and she goes joins the other losers from the first round. So it is now time for round two. We it's have Chanel, awesome, and Jerry, Paris, Van Michaels, Roxy Andrews, and Vanjie. So Miss Van, Miss Vanjie. So Bruno gets to spin again. The, he pulled Vanjie's ball again. And, and this Vanjie time... was like, thanks, Bruno. Thanks, Bruno. This time, she chose Chanel. Yes. And honestly, it was a strategic move. You're like, well, I'm going to pick Chanel. Because again, I don't want to go against Angie or Roxy. Right. And then Chanel probably made the smartest move by picking I'm Every Woman. Yep. Now, if I was Vanjie, I would have been like, can I have my outfit back, please? Like, the one I yeah, took off right. in the last one, you know, because she did the reveals. Right. Can I have that back? Because I feel uh, like I'm Every Woman would work better in that outfit than this. Exactly. Because I do think that the outfit took away from... On, but honestly, she really could have played into this, too, the way she's dressed. Because, you mm-hmm. know, I'm Every Woman. Yeah, and she was like, I'm everyone. Like, I feel like if she would have played into what she had on instead of being like, oh shit, look what I have on. Right. Like, if she would have played into it, I think she could have done better. I do. Because I'm every woman. Like, look at here, look at here. Like, you know. But when I tell you this was a master class from Chanel. One of my favorite lip syncs of the night. Like, Chanel Mm -hmm. mopped the floor with Vanjie. Oh, yeah. This is is the drag I used to go to the clubs to see. Yes, because, look, it had me just... Like, maybe I, I I need to, before we leave Texas or as soon as we get to California, I need to get some ones. But when I tell you I wanted to tip her so bad, I'm like, oh, can I just start throwing money at the TV? God, that, this is the drag that I watched as a younger person when I was in the clubs. Mm-hmm. Like, this was what it is. Like, she fully embodied the song. And again, I told you those hands, I love that she lip syncs like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm. And, uh, sh- baby, one thing about her, she she gonna feel the music, okay? <laughs> she said, if you ain't gonna feel it, don't worry, I got you, okay, baby? I ain't bragging. Cause I'm the one. Shoot. And she just, it was everything. So, Ooh, Chanel yeah. won the lip sync. Do you agree? Yes. I agree as well. Vanjie. you were safe to slay another day. Her exit was funny. <laughs> and that's when Bruno actually talked. Because, you know, uh-huh. she started playing with Bruno again. I'm like, y'all leave Bruno alone, okay, but then don't. Okay, Bruno. <laughs> but then don't, because it's funny. <laughs> now, uh, Vanjie comes back here and sits with the other queens in the workroom. So, that means we have Roxy Andrews, Angie, lip syncing to Groove It's in the Heart. The last two queens with the last song available. Yep. And what did we think of this lip sync? Um, Chanel won as soon as the first beat started. You mean Roxy? Yeah, Roxy. I'm I'm finna say wrong wrong lip sync. (laughs) Wrong lip sync. I think Angie put up a little bit of a fight, but Roxy just, but Roxy just, in this little cha-cha moment, like. I think that's what really just put me over, because like Angie was fighting and she was fighting hard. It but, was just <coughs> couldn't quite pick up what the song was putting down. And also, she didn't know the words, especially to that she rap. Like, if you paid attention during the rap, she didn't know the words. 
Yeah, because she kept turning around. No, she wasn't turning around. It's just if you looked at them lips. Because at one point she was doing this. And I'm looking at those lips, especially getting back to these screenshots. I'm like, Angie don't know the words. Oh, Angie. Oh, Angie. And you're trying to play it off because, you know, there's a distance between this stage and where the judges sit. Right. But Roxy, she knew these words, honey. And this little moment here was so funny. And came out and was just walking up the aisle. Just do, 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 do. But RuPaul announced that Roxy Andrews is the winner. Do you agree? Yes. I do as well. And Angie is safe to slay another day. Another so our day. top two queens who both earned a beautiful benefactress badge is Chanel and Roxy Andrews, which brings Chanel up to three badges. Mm-hmm. In two episodes, my bitch got three badges. You know, three. I am ecstatic. I am over the moon. I'm just so happy. <laughs> Look, and Plastic was like, she's a little sleeper cell. I was like, you didn't know that? Baby, you don't don't ever that? count out Chanel. Don't ever count. You know, we I, I've been a big advocate for Chanel. Is Chanel going to be there? Look at my list. I don't remember if Chanel's going to be there or not. Mm. I think she might be there. I don't know if she is or if she ain't. I'm going to be there. But anyway. Um, I love this so much. So they come up, and all the queens are out to watch the final lip sync. Honestly, they should have just been there the whole time. Mm. To be real with you. They should have just had them over there to begin with. Mm. But hey, you want to do it like the other Lala Perusas, and you know, they all went back to the workroom. I get it. I get it. <sighs> Excuse me. But our final song... It's Break Free by Ariana Grande, which was originally done in season seven. Hey. Roxy ate this up. She did. Chanel didn't know the this words. <laughs> the part when I say I don't wanna. Now, I will say I thoroughly enjoyed this lip sync. Oh, definitely. I, look, because I was like, oh yeah, Roxy is eating. And then Chanel came out with the little cut with the coat and doing a little twirl. And I said, ah, twirl! Twirl! My only thing is, Chanel didn't know the words at the end. No. Like the thought of my body, it came alive. That whole part right there, she did not know the words. She did not, not, not even a little bit. Nope. Not even a little bit. But Roxy. She's 10 and 0 for a reason. She is 10 and 0 for a reason, okay? And I even got the part here where Roxy's whipping her hair. Uh, Chanel is whipping her coat. Like, it was just a whole bunch of whipping going on, and I loved it. <laughs> I was with you that I was living for the coat. I really was. Okay. But RuPaul made her final decision, and the winner is Roxy Andrews. Do you agree? Yeah. And she won Hands another down. and she won another ten thousand dollars for her charity. And Chanel yeah. is safe to slay another day. So that's all right. I'ma be safe with my three badges. Huh. So afterwards RuPaul announced how many badges everybody had. Plastique had four. Angie mm-hmm. had three. Nina had two. Vanessa had two. Got Mick has two. George's mm-hmm. has four. Chanel uh-huh. has three, and Roxy yep. has five. Fuck. And then RuPaul announced that next week is the finale. It's going to be a two-part finale, and anybody could make it to the top three up until the last moment of the finale. Yeah. So that means technically all eight of them are going into the finale. So our question for our audience and for you today, Lucretia, are you Team Plastic, Team Nigeria? Team Nina West, Team Vanjie, Team Got Mick, Team Georges, Team Chanel, or Team Roxy? Hey. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, more than likely, if they, especially if they go off badges, that Roxy might have this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but 
it's a it's a hard line because I want to be like Team Vanji. I also want to be like Team Angeria. <laughs> All right, say it now because anything can happen in the finale. It's two parts for a reason. Exactly. So, call it now. Who are you officially the team of? I'm going to say Team Angeria. Okay, Team Angie. All right, look at you. For me, it, it's been the same all season. It's Team Roxy. Hey. Put a, put a crown on it. Just right on top. Right look, on top. And this time, you know, it, it won't be... If she wins it, it won't be overshadowed by Reloxitus. That That's true. This is the first time she's competing without them. And just seeing her shine, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Right. I mean, and the, the funny thing is, is without Reloxitus being there, like, you appreciate her so much more. Oh, well, see, I appreciated her on season five. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I was her biggest fan on season five. When I was watching season five, I'm like, Roxy, girl, sit down. But I was like, when we, when we got to the end, I'm like, she deserved that spot in the finale. I might not have been the biggest fan of her, but mm. she deserved that spot. And then All Stars 2 came around, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love Roxy. <laughs> And I've been on the Roxy bandwagon ever since, honey. Um, But, yeah, Team Roxy, crown it. Like, I wouldn't be mad if Angie, Vanjie, even Plastique, because Plastique showed her ass this season, okay? She did. I wouldn't be mad if any of them won. Hell, if somehow Chanel wins, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad if any of them won. Ah! Well. All but one. But we're not going to talk about Nina like that. Um... But yeah, I'm Team Roxy. Team Roxy. And that is our episode. Just a reminder, next week we will be in L.A. Yes. Living our best so, life. Drinking our House of Love cocktails. <laughs> if you want to sponsor we'll take us. pictures and videos. Yeah, well, we took some last year and they never seen the light of day. But... Well, they saw them on Instagram. That they did. Make sure you're following... Oh, and now we got the Kreesha and Desmond Instagram. So make sure you're following us on Instagram, Kreesha and Desmond. We got an Instagram. We got a TikTok. TikTok. We got a Patreon. A Patreon. That we might do some videos for Patreon. Yeah. So just make sure you are everywhere that needs to be. But also, you can follow us individually. Kreesha, where can they find you online? You can find me at Christian Hill, that's C-R-E-S-H-A-M-C-G-I-L-L on all social media. And you can find me in the club, pocket full of bud, mama, in L.A. But if I'm not there, you can find me on all social medias at Simply Desmond. That's S-I-M-P-L-Y-D-E-S-M-O-N-D. Thank you so much for spending a piece of your day with us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on in a couple weeks. Bye.